I didn't realize in the beginning of this thing that it was going to grow so organically. The initial idea came about because I read Danny Cohn's book, Train. I wrote it to fill a gap in Holocaust history. I wrote Train uh, to tell specifically the stories of uh, the Nazis, Romani, uh, disabled, homosexual, political, many other victims um, that are so often neglected. The book is really about hidden stories the people who haven't told their stories because they don't have a voice. We met with the students every few weeks um, for, for all these months. And when you read a book and you get to talk to the author, there's so many things that are left open, there's so many things you can talk to them about, so many questions you can ask. What did you mean by this and you know what was the symbolism? And it's really helpful and it's an awesome experience. The students were pretty incredible in, in the way they engaged with the material. The work of TRAIN allowed for all different content areas to come together. Interdisciplinary learning for a school is a challenge. It takes really dedicated, phenomenal educators. I was really excited at the opportunity for such a rich integration with this project. I was really excited to let the kids have the opportunity to express some creativity while also diving deeply into their research and analytical skills. One of my favorite parts was the found poetry that the students created where they went inside the novel and highlighted particular words on a page and created their own poem that not only made sense, but also reflected what was happening in the story. Um, that was, it was completely magical. Another part that I absolutely loved was when the students created portraits of the characters. It was a way of bringing them back into the novel even further than, you know, they had already been. And a couple of the portraits, I was amazed, looked like the characters that I had imagined um, while I was writing the book. Sometimes, the image connects with us in a, in a different way. It may be possibly in a more emotional way in, in some cases. Throughout the process we wanted like, well how can we talk about things that are hard to talk about? How can we unsilence them? And how can we feel comfortable talking about them? We read a book, unsilencing the stories uh, from the Holocaust. Uh, we, we wrote papers on silencing our own stories that we researched ourselves as students. And we began the year by having those conversations about sort of digging into what does it mean to be a hidden story. How do they become hidden? How do they become unhidden? What are the powers or the individuals that keep them hidden? And what's the value or the importance in unhiding them? I think a big thing of what we're doing is we ourselves first are educating ourselves about these different hidden stories. Because it would not be appropriate to teach other people without having a good understanding ourselves. And the students all throughout the year have worked to construct a website that could be used to teach train and to teach these hidden histories. We didn't just read the text, we read between the lines. And we thought about what's the best way to teach this to others. We looked at a lot of different other similar websites that are out there. You know, we explored models like Sparknotes and Cliff Notes and thought about how can we make ours stronger. I'm the most proud of the website because I feel that it's a culmination of everything we've done in eighth grade from artwork and historical research and literary analysis and learning about the book. Like a small group of kids, including myself, was in charge of the website and like the website design. So those students really took on more of an ownership in creating the website but every student took ownership in creating the content for the website. And I think it was a really great way to analyze what we were reading and really get into it. And I think it would be a great resource for kids all around the world and teachers. As part of this project, we came up with the idea of doing a community book club where parents, teachers, and students would all read the novel train. That was incredible. Suddenly we're seeing young people become educators, we're seeing intergenerational dialogue right before our very eyes, we're seeing community learning happening. I think that parents having the opportunity to hear their, their children speak about this book really allowed them to see them in a different light, to see them as 
people other than the teenagers living in their home, but as really deep thinkers, as critical thinkers, as people that care. We go from the students to the teachers, and we teach other people who are unaware about this to them. And I think as we wrap up the year, I feel like that's most cumulative in the play. And it's so exciting that that we're going to get an opportunity working with Northlight to to see this staged as a production. That team of Northlight and Bernard Zell sort of came together to create a play. And Wilfredo, the playwright, was here all fall. And he worked with the students to create the play. And then I came in after the fall to sort of direct. The play is Keepers, and it's a play about a group of students exactly the age of these students. And we're a, establishing probably a hundred years in the future and then history's been completely erased and this group of young people is now re-establishing history. I think our play is pretty amazing. I think we've put like a lot of hard work in it and I really hope the audience takes away this message of preserving history and keeping it alive. The play is going to send a multitude of messages. It's going to help us to see things as adults that we never would have seen before. When they speak or they perform, they're not just saying lines, they're actually sharing what they feel. We are keepers of the past and the present. I think about how I want to teach and what I want to teach. I want the content to be excellent and significant. Grappling with themes that matter. What is the life worthiness of what we're learning? I think the learning stuck beyond just learning facts or identifying places on maps. The more times the work of train stretched into different content areas and was integrated, I saw our kids open up their minds. I saw them reach out to one another and become better listeners, um, stronger thinkers. They're great people. They care about social justice. They're deeply impassioned, abstract, creative thinkers. They were able to take stories from the past, connect to them, apply them to their own lives. I've seen wonderful growth. What I've learned here in this last year is that it's perfectly possible that young people have the potential to really go deep and to really ask questions we would usually expect of adults, of college students. So that's been really inspiring and I've been able to go back to other schools and to my colleagues and make the argument that we can expect more of young people. Look what this school, look what the Melanzelle is doing here.